Hello everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture. We're going to be reviewing what we know so far about the Flying Seed and the upcoming teacher training course. This is one of our off weeks. Remember that we get new information from Lantos every other week, every other Sunday to present to you. But even though that seems like a fairly relaxed pace, as you can tell, the knowledge stacks up we get to the point where there's an awful lot of information and it's hard to remember it all. It's hard to keep it straight. So today is one of those days we're going to review what we know and go through everything and get you prepared for the course. Many of you have already signed up for the course and that's exciting for us. Uh, I know it's going to be a fun time for all of you. And the course is it's going to present a lot of information about the flying seed and the knowledge that Lantos wants coming out this year. It is helpful for us to think back many months, back to last summer, when Lantos told us about the flying seed and what this information is, what this knowledge, what this energy is. Remember how he told us that the greatest civilizations that the earth has ever seen were all based on this knowledge of the flying seed. Atlantis, Egypt, in fact, in Egyptian times, Lantos explained, the great pyramids of Egypt were built as a symbol for the flying seed to remind everyone in society of this great energy, the great knowledge of the flying seed. But as great as that society was, it was not deemed advanced enough by the Ascended Masters to be entrusted with the ninth pod of knowledge, the most fundamental pod of knowledge of the flying seed. That is something that we have been entrusted with, that we have been given for this time on Earth. So that will put things into perspective for us. This year is a year where Lantos is going to be focusing on the flying seed. So while all of the other tools of biogenesis continue to be not only effective, but important in our daily use, the ability to use the wand to manage stress, the ability to use the flame when the need arises, the ability for the wheels to help with situations, all of those daily treatments that are beneficial for your family members, friends, clients, all of those things continue in their importance and relevance on your daily existence. But this year is dedicated in large part to the knowledge of the flying seed because this knowledge is going to be the underpinning of our society as we enter into this eon of eternal light. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started reviewing our information. We'll start with the basics. Your daily routine with the sunrise and sunset seeds. These are things that you should be doing every morning, every evening without fail. Even if it's only 10 minutes of your time in the morning, 10 minutes of time at night, no matter how sleepy you are, no matter how rushed in the morning you may be, these are things that Lantos wants you doing every single day. So our sunrise seeds, we have our I am seeds. Inception, appellation, and mission. The inception seed, as you know, is your seed determined by your time, date, and location on earth of your birth. So that is something that you go to the website, you look up, it gives you that information, and then that seed never changes. Your, mission, your appellation seed, this is based on your name. If you change your name, then this seed could change, but otherwise you simply go to the website and you enter your name, you will get your information. So those two seeds are easy and they do not change. The mission seed, now, if you are selecting your mission seed at home, this can change on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to see this morning about how this happens. The idea is that on a day-to-day -day basis, as circumstances change, as information changes, your mission seed will get updated by the moon wings. And that means that you do this every day and it gets you on track for your mission every single day. Now, for those of you who are going to attend the course in Hawaii, you will be selecting not one, but three mission seeds. 
and then for a sustained period of time. For right now, our information is that this seed, these three seeds won't change. Uh, it may be that they change on a monthly or yearly basis. It may be that it changes after a few years. But from what we know right now from Lantos, if you select your mission seeds either at one of the gates at a course that we hold there or at the seat of the flying seed, the seat of eternal light in Hawaii, then your mission seeds won't change thereafter. But for the rest of us, selecting your mission seed on a daily basis is very quick and easy. You use the moon wings and you use them with the intent, I am thy instrument. You'll throw the moon wings four times. That gives you your answer as to your mission seed for that day. So I am inception, appellation, mission. We do each of those. If you're in a rush, do them just for one minute each. That's three minutes. If you're not in such a rush, go ahead and do them for three minutes each. So that's going to be nine minutes of your time. Then it is helpful if you do your daily seed, which again is listed on the website. The daily seed is good to be enlivened for three to five minutes each day. This will increase the amount of support that you get from the energies awake on earth during that day. So while, while those energies are awake, it is helpful to you to be able to take advantage of them. Enlivening a different seed where those energies are not as enlivened on earth during the day, that becomes not so beneficial. It is far more beneficial to enliven those energies that are awake already during that day. So that's why we enliven the daily seed every day. Take advantage of what is available. Lantos again and again in that, in that message used the phrase, make hay while the sun shines. So we go ahead and take advantage of those seeds as we move forward with them. Okay, that is our sunrise seeds. Now our sunset seeds. We have, again, three seeds. The seed of action, the seed of relationship, the seed of inception. The seed of action we find with our moon wings using the intent, I am the way. We throw the moon wings four times. That gives us our seed of action. The seed of relationship, same thing, using the moon wings. We use the intent, I am the song of life. Throwing four times gives us our seed of relationship. What do those seeds do? The seed of action is intended to either promote, strengthen any beneficial effects of actions that you had during the course of the day. Or if there was something bad that happened to you, it will mitigate the effects of that negative action so that you carry on to the next day without so much of that negative effect in your life. Seed of relationship promotes relationships. These are relationships between people, but also cosmic relationships. And then of course your inception seed. Lanto said the inception seed opens every day and opens every night for you. So it is the first seed that you enliven in the morning and it is the last seed that you enliven in the evening. Okay, we will do those for three to five minutes each, which means this is a nine minute to 15 minute process every evening. Again, if you are so tired that you are just falling asleep while you're doing this, still do it. Lanto said that you may be too tired to notice the benefits, but the benefits are still going to be there. So we do this no matter what, every single night. Our daily routine then, the important ones. Now they're all beneficial. Uh, doing the garland of Genesis every single day if you wanted to do it. it it's timely. It's time consuming. It takes 20 to 30 minutes of your time to do that. But if you wanted to do it every day, it would, it would be very beneficial. But what are the ones that you really should be doing no matter what? Just go out of your way to make sure that you do these. Those, Lanta said, your sunrise seeds, your creating and ability practice and the shield of protection, in the morning, those were the essential ones. Now, if you have the extra 10 minutes, it's really beneficial to do the golden matrix. You, so you start with the sunrise seeds. You'll always start with the sunrise seeds, 
follow with the golden matrix. That takes 10 minutes. But what it does is it opens up your physical structure to the energy of the flying seed. So that's going to be very beneficial for you every day. But if you're running late and you need that extra 10 minutes to drive to work, uh, then you can cut this one out. The creating and art of ability. This one Lantos really did want you doing every single day. Even if you cut corners on it, do it just a short period of time. Do it just five minutes for creating, five minutes for ability. Uh, you still should be doing this every single day. Now the shield and flame technique, uh, this takes you less than one minute. It's easy, it's simple, but what it does after you have done your flying seed, your golden matrix, and your creating, is it helps to protect that great light that you generated within you so that you don't lose it to your environment as you go throughout the course of your day. So it helps you. It's worth the investment of one minute of your time before you leave each morning. In the afternoon, if you have the ability to do the pearl of starlight technique, that would be very good. If you just don't have time, that's something that you can skip, but it is beneficial to do that on a daily basis. In the evening, the one that Lanto said over and over was, you know, essential, the personal pathway technique, followed by the sunset seeds. The other two elements are beneficial. The phrases of affluence, this is something that will take it takes building up for it to be truly effective and beneficial for you, which means that if you do it once a week, that's not really going to be terribly beneficial, but if you do it every single day, it builds up the energy to support affluence for you. The vision technique, this is one that I know a lot of you probably don't do because it takes some time and you fall asleep during it. Uh, and then it's hard to get back up and do the other techniques. But if you can do the vision technique for five or 10 minutes, that would be beneficial. And if you can't do it every night, try doing it on the weekends or something like that. Do it as many times as you can. And then the Garland of Genesis, if you have extra time on the weekend, do it then. So those are our daily techniques that, want, that Lantos wanted us to be taking advantage of. Now, we just last week learned a technique using the flying seed to remove obstacles. The reason why I want to go over this again is because it highlights a really good point for us to keep in mind. We have spent a lot of time and effort focusing on the sunrise seeds and the sunset seeds. That's because those two times, the morning and the evening, doing those seeds, if we do that every single day, we get great benefits within our lives from the flying seed. But there are many other areas where the flying seed is going to provide benefits. Doing it in treatments, doing a flying seed wheel treatment where you use the moon wings to select the best wheels related to the appropriate seeds for an individual that you are going to give a treatment to. And then you add other wheels alongside the flying seed. And then you use the wheels during the treatment. That's going to be a very beneficial way to use the flying seed as well. However, there can be very discrete issues, singular issues that come up at different times during your week, during your month, where you need assistance on that particular issue. Go to the flying seed. It's going to be able to provide help. This is why the moon wings are so important, why they're so beneficial, because you can simply focus on your desire with the moon wings, let them fly, do it four times. It gives you a seed that is going to be most beneficial for you, then you enliven that seed. So we take the idea of removing an obstacle. And even though the message was long and beautiful, the instructions are straightforward and easy. Let's take a look at those instructions for removing an obstacle. You are presented with an obstacle in your path. It could be an obstacle at work. It could, at work. It could be an obstacle in a relationship, uh, some sort of obstacle. You use the moon wings. Your intent with the moon wings, the desire, is the removal of the obstacle which stands in your path. You let fly the moon wings four times. That gives you the seed. So then you take the wheel 
that is associated with that seed. You place it on the flying seed, and then you create for that seed using the seed phrase. Once you've completed that, which takes just a couple of minutes, then you place that wheel, take it off the flying seed, place it on an image of the goal. The image could be a visual image, so it could be a photograph, a photograph of a person, for example, photograph of a location. It could be of a location on a map. It could be a written description of your goal. You could write down your goal and then place the wheel on that. Then you place a pendant of eternal light and a supercell, either the super water cell or superstar cell, uh, next to it on the written goal or on the image or the location on the map. You leave it there for 24 hours. Lantos was very clear about this in the instruction. Leave it for 24 hours, which means not 20 hours, not 18 hours, but 24 hours. You may create for it using the flying seed periodically during that time. Take the wheel, put it on the flying seed, create a couple of minutes of time, put it back on the image of the goal. You can do that as many times as you want during that 24 hour period of time. So this is an example, an easy example, of how you would use the flying seed for something that you need assistance on in your life. And the entire process of doing this, let's try to add up the amount of time that this would take. So our first step, using the moon wings, that's gonna take you just about a minute to do. The second step, putting the wheel on the flying seed and then creating, let's say that takes you three minutes, four minutes. So we're at about five minutes right now total. Then we take the wheel off the flying seed, put it on an image, and let's say that you don't have an image, so you actually have to write down the goal and it takes you a minute to do that. So we're at six minutes. Then we leave it on for the next 24 hours. We don't have to create periodically through the next 24 hours, but we can if we want to. But if we just want to leave the wheel there, the pendant, the supercell, still, we're looking at only six minutes that that took during the course of the day to help address an obstacle. And that obstacle could be something major in your life. So this is an easy way that it involves not much time, not much effort to get great benefit. Okay, let's talk about mission. Lantos gave us a message a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, talking about miss mission, talking about the moon wings, talking about the benefit of using the moon wings at the Great Central Translator to be able to find mission. And I'm not going to read the whole message, but I'm going to read parts of it because it's uh, important that you understand why finding mission, finding your mission seed, enlivening the mission seed to enliven your mission is so important. Why Lantos considers it so singularly important that he focused on that element for people wanting to go to the great central translator to be able to establish this, to be able to find their mission seed in the enlivened atmosphere without the disruptions that we find with the great central translator. So here's what Lanto said, mission is the wind, the great wind which never ceases. This wind aids the individual along the path with greater speed, greater ease, and guides the life force through the maze of obstacles. When one travels with the wind, the journey is smooth, the journey is rapid. One receives support from the surroundings. When one moves against the wind, the bumps are felt and the pace is slowed. The journey in the cross direction of the great wind may be described in a single word, uncomfortable. One encounters discomfort, discomfort and struggle. One encounters even the feeling of fear. These feelings are symptoms that the path, is, the path one is on is a path on the cross currents of the great cosmic wind. The wind is the unseen force. Though unseen, 
the effects are easily perceived. So let's talk about that for just a second. When you or someone you know, family member, a friend, a client, uh, is concerned about the state of your life, when there are complaints of discomfort, and we're not necessarily talking about physical discomfort, but the idea of struggle, the idea of stress, the idea of even fear, those symptoms are symptoms that the person is not on the correct course in life. And how is it not on the correct course in life? Because it is on cross currents with the great cosmic wind. Your correct course in life, Lantos explained this many years ago to us, when one follows one's proper course in life, happiness is a natural byproduct. You're naturally going to be happy. Life is a lot easier. It is rewarding. It is happy. But when one is not on the correct course, life gets bumpy and happiness goes away. So this dissatisfaction, this discomfort, fear, unpleasantness, these are symptoms that someone is not on the correct course, that they are not traveling with the great cosmic wind. So how do we find the great cosmic wind? How does one person find one's own path? Lantos continued, how do we find the great cosmic wind stream? This is the question which is within each individual. Each individual searches for the mission. Each individual naturally seeks to locate the great cosmic current. One senses its existence. One senses the existence of this great cosmic flow, great cosmic wind of existence. The answer is that one's location will influence one's ability to connect with this great cosmic wind. The current position of the individual may have objects in the environment which interfere with the currents of energy, the forces of energy that we call mission. The environment is ever changing. The obstacles which are here today may not remain for long periods. Some obstacles may simply pass along as clouds moving through the sky. It is for this reason that we repeat our process of selection of a seed of mission with regularity so that the guidance may be adjusted to the current conditions of the environment. The moon wings sense the energies beyond the surface level. And Lanto spoke about using the moon wings to find the great cosmic wind, the path for the great cosmic wind for that individual under those conditions that exist at that particular time. But then he said, it is in the presence of our beloved master tool, the master tool of the great central translator, that the signals of the source may be most clearly detected. This is the role of our beloved great central translator. So this is why it is so beneficial for someone to use the moon wings to select mission. If you are doing this at home, you do it on a daily basis so that you can help to find your path as it is most pertinent, most relevant to you on that day. For those of you fortunate enough to be able to find your mission seed at one of the gates, the Western Gate or the Eastern Gate, or at the Great Central Translator at the seed of the Flying Seed in Hawaii, then you find your mission seed, and actually your three mission seeds, and you find them on a lasting basis. Not just on a daily basis, but on a lasting basis. Then enlivening that mission seed, doing it every morning, this is what helps you to find and stay on your path in life, the path that is going to provide you with the greatest happiness, the greatest satisfaction, the greatest love, the greatest success and affluence, the greatest health. All of the things that you want in life are going to be found along that path that is your path in life, the path that you're carried upon when you follow with the great cosmic wind stream. So this is mission. 
Now, let's talk about harmonics. We spoke about this four or five weeks ago, some time ago. And it was a long, beautiful message. We're not going to go through the whole message because it was such a long message. But we're going to highlight some of the important aspects of that message. Why? Because sometimes when Lantos gives a really long, beautiful message, we're, the important parts are lost on us because we're so taken with how beautiful the message was, we tend to appreciate it as a whole without focusing on the specific nuggets of information which will be of greatest benefit to us in our lives. So let's talk about harmonics. He said, harmonics, harmonics. We advance along our path of knowledge and we enter the gates of knowledge of harmonics. It is a vast body of knowledge. It is the knowledge of placement, the knowledge of relationship, the knowledge of form. Through evaluation of the aspects of harmonics, we gain access to a wealth of knowledge which may be applied to all expressions of life, all expressions of form, all expressions of existence. Relationship and the harmonics which emerge govern the path of expression from the unexpressed to the realm of form and substance. Harmonics are fundamental combinations of the elemental vibrations. And these sublime sounds, yes, we may refer to these harmonics as sounds of creation. These sounds influence and guide the forms within creation. It is the song of creation. The forms dance within the cosmic rhythm produced through these sublime harmonics. The assembly of harmonics, the emergence of form, the placement of form within creation is tied to harmonics. Form is the expression of the dynamics of harmonics. You see, Lantos continued on a little bit later, the knowledge of harmonics of the flying seed offers the knowledge to explore the values of relationship of the great cosmic vibrations, the universal energies, and how these same harmonics apply to our everyday existence. Harmonics apply to all layers. The laws of harmonics are upheld on the great universal scale and are likewise displayed on the individual level. With research into the harmonics of creation, we will gain knowledge to, the, to skillfully navigate the layers of relationship upon earth, as well as to voyage the grand scale of forms throughout the universe. On the daily layer, we will research location. Location, the physical location, and the interaction with the individual. You may have noticed that certain locations offer increased support, yes? Certain locations offer greater support, greater stability, greater happiness, while others present some disruption, some discord, some obstacles. Health may be affected as well. The physical structure may be promoted and strengthened, or it may be burdened and weakened. There are many layers to relationship, and yet, the answer to the origin of these unseen influences is found in harmonics, the energies which emerge, that which takes form, through the contact of one element with another, the attention of one to the other, just as the precious wave is produced through the meeting of water and earth. These interactions, these relationships come forth with varying degrees of support benefit or disadvantage, the under, understanding of this unseen factor which blesses or draws back the energy, the understanding lies in the knowledge of the harmonics of the flying seed. And then skipping ahead, Lanta said, harmonics apply to the material physical layer just as they apply to the more subtle layers and aspects of creation. On the material layer of existence, harmonics are experienced daily. 
The relationship of an individual with another. The relationship of the individual with the location of the home. These are areas for the consideration of harmonics. Just as one individual relates differently to different individuals, the relationship of the individual with different locations will vary as well. The location of success for one individual may be a location of loss for another. The answer to this great mystery is found in the mechanics of initial rotations and the harmonics which emerge. Yes, we will begin the exploration of the values of the harmonics of the flying seed. Yes, we will offer this knowledge in our blessed course of teacher training. The first course of the teacher training of the flying seed will be offered in our center of the flying seed, following the great assembly of light. We will bring forth the great knowledge to further the understanding of the beloved flying seed. We will deepen our understanding of the precious seeds. We will gain greater understanding for relationships which exist between the seeds and the qualities such as the great cosmic spheres. During this course, we will experience the treatment sessions of the flying seed and each individual will select the precious seed of mission. The knowledge offered during this course trains the individuals in the knowledge required to assist others on the path. The course trains our blessed teachers. The individuals will graduate the training seminar equipped to become exponents of the beloved knowledge. Exponents of the flying seed. Trained teachers of the flying seed. It is certainly accurate to say that harmonics is something that is going to benefit your understanding of creation. But it is also going to help you understand those people, those places, <clears throat> those endeavors that will most benefit you, your family members, your friends, your clients, all around the world. This is one of the things that we're going to be learning in the course of the Flying Seed, the teacher training course. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'll speak with you Wednesday.